Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, we're gonna give people another couple of minutes to join and get settled in, and then we'll kick things off. Stay tuned. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hello everyone and welcome again to today's webinar on managing compliance and security in a remote world, which is now a new norm for many of us as we already know. A quick apology to anyone who joined before this time. I know you may have heard some uh, background bloopers um, and uh, uh, banter in, in prep for this. That was an, an error on our end. But again, thank you guys so much for uh, joining and we're gonna jump right in. So. I'm Dr. Christine Zwakor, your moderator for today's conversation. A little bit of background on me. I've been in the cybersecurity industry for over a decade now. Um, I earned a PhD in security engineering and led a variety of cybersecurity functions within the Fortune 100 arena before taking on my current role as the founder and CEO of a fast growing startup um, in, based in Chicago, which is Cyber Pop-Up. We're an on-demand uh, cybersecurity service platform that's uh, recently been recognized as a 2020 industry disruptor finalist and also hot off the press um, just announced that we're officially funded in part by Google. So exciting things happening there. Uh, joining the conversation today, we have Chris Jilks with us. Chris is Variato's Director of EMEA Operations, um, a very experienced tech executive and insider threat expert. Chris was a part of the senior team at Canon that focused on cybersecurity and also worked at Blackthorn Technologies on their GRC platform and digital forensics operations. And so his experience spans numerous high profile commercial organizations and government agencies. Thank you, Chris, for joining the conversation. Yeah, great to be here. Thank you for, for having me on today. Awesome. 
Now, I want to start by wishing all of our attendees a happy National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, for those who um, are not familiar, while it's important to be cyber vigilant every day, of course, October is the month when we go the extra mile. And so if you're as obsessed with cybersecurity and a proud geek like me, this is the best month of the year. Um, and so our quick note here and the theme for this month is to do your part and be cyber smart. Now, for today's agenda, We'll start by exploring what I call the pandemic security risk trifecta, which covers compliance, security, and the role that people, also known as insiders, play in um, all of this. Um, throughout, you'll learn also how to maintain compliance and gain visibility into your mobile workforce and devices as well using technology. Um, we have time at the end for questions, of course. However, you know, feel free to submit any questions that you have throughout the session in the Q&A box. And we'll keep an eye out for those and try to get through as many of them as we can. Now, I want to start out with the compliance conversation because I know it's usually the biggest concern for companies at a basic level. You know, when you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs in relation to cybersecurity, you know, I think compliance is one of those base level, you know, foundational things that uh, people really pay attention to in order to survive and avoid hefty fines, right? But I think there are some blind spots that companies might be missing when you think about compliance, especially in the context of this remote era so the obvious concern in uh you know this remote world is that there's data all over the place right with little geographical boundaries um it's in your employee's living room basement it's in a coffee shop um, their personal ipad that someone is sharing with their kid for school assignments and more and so there's no you know on-prem you know network you know, firewalls that safe fort that we had in the in the past for the most part um to keep data and systems safe and in this kind of confined space and so of course this can lead to compliance issues with everything from local laws to the more popular regulations that i'm sure you guys hear about on a regular basis um, like PCI, HIPAA, GDPR, and so on. You know, for example, um, imagine trying to fulfill a request where you need to delete data under, you know, the right for a customer to be forgotten, quote unquote, a clause within GDPR when, you know, a thousand of your employees are now downloading those lists locally and doing their work at home and you have no visibility into it, right? Um, the second piece is, how are processes and people adapting to comply with your own internal information security policy with remote work? So if your own security policy requires, for example, that um, let's say confidential information be stored a certain way or only accessed through secure channels, um, but due to remote work, you have to make an exception, right? And that's not the case. So now you're out of compliance with your own policy, which, you know, if you get audited on that in the future, or whatever the case may be, um, you could fail and, and fall out of compliance that way. And then the last one, um, third parties, um, tends to be a blind spot that most people don't think about from this um, angle. So in your contracts with third parties, whether you're a seller or a buyer, um, oftentimes uh, people might, you know, promise to keep certain system standards to protect both parties from cyber risks um, or a potential breach. So for example, you know, in a partner contract between, let's say, bank A and bank B, they've agreed that, you know, they're sharing sensitive information with each other and will only house it on you know, company devices, let's say as a, a random rule or securely erase it when the project is over. Well, now that your employees are remote and working differently, and you know, there might be some more BYOD in the mix now, you know, can you really make good on that promise? Or are you not out of compliance with your third party contracts? Now, I spent a good portion of my career in this space and have seen so many circumstances where a customer is now out of compliance. In other, wor in other words, um, almost like a breach of contract um, on their agreements with their third parties based on some of these changes. And so it's a scenario, again, that I think um, uh, people don't pay attention to as much, but it's an, yet another angle to consider in how uh, this shift to remote work can impact the world of compliance. And I'm curious, Chris, to hear your take on what you all have seen at Variato when it comes to compliance problems and how you're helping folks navigate that. Yeah, I think... Um... It's interesting. You're absolutely right. You know, things have things have changed, and and views are very different now. But um, I think if we look at a scenario which ties all of those risks that you've just um, talked about in in, in one place, uh, this could be quite interesting. Um, you know, a hospital. Let's take a hospital. It has sent all their billing and insurance reps home, work from home. 
and according to your internal security policy, your, uh, your third party contracts, HIPAA regulations, all of these you've got to comply with. You know, employees shouldn't be able to freely download and then manipulate patient data. However, as we know now, each morning, John, he's sitting in his kitchen, clicks onto the VPN and downloads the patient records to start working. If during the day he clicks the disconnect VPN button, the hospital has lost his visibility. You know, they don't know what he's doing with the patient data. And all of a sudden, without warning, you're out of compliance. The great thing is that Cerebral eliminates the problem because it's not VPN reliant. So, you know, communication can be set up through a, a private URL. So anytime the person's online, data will flow back to the console. And additionally, you know, even if John shuts down the Wi-Fi and goes offline completely, you know, hits the golf course, perhaps, you know, Cerebral is still monitoring and recording all his activity or, you know, throughout the time. And uh, so a definitive record, an auditable trail is maintained and stored locally. And then the next time John goes online, all of that data uploads back to the server. And because it's stored in a SQL database, you know, reports can be queried to meet any compliance re reporting requirement at any time. Yeah, and I think that's um, that's an important thing to you know consider, right? To the the points that I made earlier, and, and what you said here, it's like in this era, um, there's a lot of people who are relying on uh, you know VPN, right? And that's being pushed so heavily, and it's it's super important, right? But it's not a silver bullet, and we'll talk about that um, a little bit um, a little bit more. But first, another element of this is that you know compliance is a start, right? But we all know that compliance doesn't mean fully secure, of course, and uh, we have bigger issues here. And so to set some context on the security conversation, here are a couple of um, stats that I found interesting. There's a, a report from Pulse Secure that found that 84% of US organizations expect a broader and more persistent remote work adoption after the pandemic passes. Um, but at the same time, adopting remote work uh, you know, friendly policies come with security challenges for tech leaders. So some stud uh, studies have shown that remote employees are less likely to follow security best practices. For example, there was a report by uh, Malwarebytes um, that was meant to showcase security in today's you know, work from home environment. And it found that 18% of respondents said cybersecurity was not a priority uh, for them. Um, and then lastly, a report that was commissioned by ISC Squared um, found that nearly a fourth of information security professionals uh, said cybersecurity incidents experienced in their, in their organizations increased um, since transitioning to remote work more. And so I think the bottom line here is that as we continue to lean into this you know, new norm, the security risk footprint will continue to increase. And it's not just about devices and networks, right? It's about people also. So insider risk is still huge. 60% um, of breaches coming from employees, uh, contractors, partners. Um, that's a stat from pre-COVID. Um, and the average cost of an insider attack um, has grown from from um, by 31% to over a million, uh, 11 million per incident, sorry, over the last two years alone. And that again is another pre COVID incident. And so from my perspective, when I look at that, I my opinion is like those same employees that are now working remotely have more freedom and less boundaries, um, which means more opportunity, whether it's intentional or unintentional, right? Because all insiders aren't, you know, malicious, right? But whether it's intentional or intentional, there is that greater opportunity to cause harm. And um, that's concerning, and that can also impact um, compliance and the, the security side of things. Um, and so to when you bring all of these challenges together in reality, um, I think you're looking at three core issues here. In this new environment, there's an inherent loss of control, right, which leads to an inevitable loss of data. Um, another thing is that access management is starting to look a lot like a bowl of tech spaghetti um, is what I like to, to call it, um, because people need access um, and they're coming from, you know, distant places over connections that might not be trustworthy, um, yet companies 
have made risky decisions to open up access in order to keep business going, uh, which you know makes sense to a certain extent. Like the, it was such an, an uncertain time, but um, oftentimes that access was opened up right without the right controls in place, um, leading to more risk exposure. And so I think it's important to you know now that you know things aren't normal by any means, but I think now that we've operated in this space for a couple of months now, to really start to look into um, what some of those decisions mean long term since this isn't going away um hence why i think zero trust um is such an even bigger buzzword today um, and again we'll, we'll talk about that more in a, a couple of minutes but the third key issue to keep in mind is that visibility challenges have been just highlighted and exasperated so you can't protect what you can't see i say that a lot i think as people work everywhere and then elements like byod come into play visibility into networks uh, devices, uh, people, individual like user behavior, um, those become an even greater um, challenge. And so um, those are, you know, kind of three areas that I feel um, of the many things that are going on right now are causing some of the most uh, pain points. Now, I want to pause for a moment before we get into, you know, solutions and what people can do about these uh, these things to hear your thoughts, Chris, as well. So you've talked about what you guys are seeing at Variato from a compliance standpoint. Um, anything to add on you know, trends or, or what you all are seeing and how you're helping people when it comes to security and insider threats? Yeah, listen, I've got to say, I love the uh, the tech spaghetti graphic. It's uh, I think we've all seen that at some point. But um, listen, firstly, Christine, businesses have realised that, um, you know, just locking down the perimeter is no longer enough. You've now got to have, um, you know, something that caters for a remote workforce and the, the boundaries have changed. And therefore, you've got a, uh, uh, you need a more holistic and focused um, solution. You, you know, you've got to be looking at the end point. You really have. We've been able to provide reassurance to businesses that, uh, you know, whilst they can't see the employee, they can see what they're doing and act accordingly if they need to. They've got to protect themselves. So, um, you know, one one particular problem, and I've seen this today as well, has been where, you know, um, you've got to be able to control downloads of data to, to devices. Uh, the good news is we've we've got it covered, and uh, Cerebral can help you with that. But um, you know the problems are many. But what we are seeing is that switch to the endpoint for sure. Yeah, I I completely I completely agree. Now shifting gears towards steps that people can take, we wanted to walk through some high level tips before we uh, dive a bit deeper into some of the powerful visibility that you, you can get through technology. So the first thing of course is basic hygiene to secure remote devices is important, right? So um, there's all of the you know very fundamental things that, that I'm sure everyone on this call already knows from using strong passwords to antivirus to you know everything in between. Um, I also won't beat the dead horse of VPN again because that's something that everyone has been talking about during this time and, and is again like fundamental table stakes, like um, very necessary. But I do think it's worth calling out here that VPN, um, at least you know from conversations going on across the, the industry and, and in my opinion as well, um, it won't be the answer for many companies for too much longer, on its own at least, because traditional VPN is not uh, granular enough to meet the needs of today's workplace. So for example, if a device falls into the wrong hands and an unauthorized party can you know, connect to the network remotely, at that point, you know, all bets are off. So they now have uh, that access, right? And if they are masked as a trusted user, how do you even detect that over VPN, right? So to adapt to a environment where, you know, everyone's remote, everyone's working from home or working from different places, I think organizations have to adopt what a lot of people are calling at this point, um, ZTNA or uh, Zero Trust Network Access Model, um, which takes into account, uh, you know, different details uh, and contexts like, a user's you know, role and job title, like the device um, that they're using, like the location and, and different elements that you know, individually might not uh, say a lot, but 
when pulled together and, and analyzed, you know, with the right context can share a lot about um, how risky um, and, and a connection is or how risky a, a user is, um, whether, you know, they're logged into their, you know, correct account or not. And I think um, that's how you deal with the access management spaghetti that <laughs> we talked about earlier, um, along with a host of other challenges. Um, and it's interesting that a lot of companies are already starting to see the value of this um, ZTNA model compared to uh, VPN, so much so that Gartner predicts that by 2023, 60% uh, of enterprises will phase out traditional VPNs and be using uh, this, this newer model. Um, a couple of other quick things to note um, update your uh, information security policy to adapt to the new norm and make sure that that gets communicated uh, uh, broadly across the organization. That'll help out a lot with some of the challenges I talked about earlier when it comes to even being in compliance with your own uh, policy, as well as just making sure that your organization is aligned with the, where the, the world is moving today, right? Um, training and awareness is another huge one. So um, like I mentioned before, it's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. It's a great opportunity to just you know help people be more aware of things that they should and shouldn't do year round. Um, and you know it's not, I know it's October already, but it's not too late to get some of that content out there. Um, uh, there's a ton of uh, free resources and things um, online, um, depending on you know where where you are in your awareness journey. Um, but this is super important, something that I'm very pa uh, passionate about. And so, um, if you want insight into you know free resources like digital posters, email templates, all of that, I'm happy to share. Um, just shoot me a quick note. Um, and then, lastly, of course, is monitoring. So. Uh, like I said before, like you can't protect what you can't see. And that was already a concern and um, a major issue, I think, prior to this year and prior to the pandemic. But now more than ever, visibility is critical to you know any sound cybersecurity strategy or any program at all. And so um, those were just a few tips to uh, to keep in mind. I think the bottom line, though, is that you have to secure your remote workforce, right? Um, in tech, this has been one of the most critical conversations of the year, um, as highlighted here by Gartner, um, to basically drop everything and secure your remote workforce. Um, and so on that note, I'll transition the controls over to Chris to walk you through um, the technology that can help um, and what this could look, look like in practice, as well as add in any additional tips that you have when it comes to security. I'll also continue to keep an eye out for uh, questions, so um, feel free to keep those coming. Okay, so nearly a smooth transition, but I'm hoping you can see my screen. Yep. So uh, basically, um, yeah, the, like my transition there, we've now gone for a transition in terms of, you know, where the world is right now. And um, we've got to all pay a, a bit of closer attention to to the workforce and, and, and how we actually, you know, do secure that. So if we were talking, oh, February, I think 90% of the conversations would have been about inside threat. Um, it's funny, isn't it? You know, the ability to keep your, your data secure against fraud. But as a pandemic started to spread um, in March, so did companies' priorities. And um, as they lost visibility of their employees who started working remotely, their concerns shifted. So, you know, firstly into productivity and engagement, and then on to the compliance nightmare. That, that sits in front of them now where remote employees are, uh, you know, set to create hell if you're not careful. And uh, we'll touch these three areas in just a minute. Um, but there are some some key points, I think, that we need to uh, we need to address. And uh, first of all, I want to give you a, a high level of overview of how Cerebral as a platform actually works. So basically, you have a management console attached to a SQL database and you can deploy Cerebral agents out to employee devices, so Macs, PCs, Androids, whatever you like, at remote locations or, or within an office. 
the agent is deployed in visible or stealth mode uh, and being brutally honest most people will prefer stealth mode if uh, they're covering t's and c's off um, th through hr separately once installed on the employee's devices the agent will start analyzing and recording all activity 24 7 if you want or within working hours you choose um, and you have all the reports and data at your fingertips when you log into the Cerebral dashboard. So what Cerebral is watching? Well, pretty much everything. It is everything that's, uh, that's on the endpoint. Websites visited, application usage, email, chat, uh, document movement, unusual user behavior, the sort of anomalies that we, we want to find, uh, files uploaded, printed perhaps, or even sent to a USB, maybe keystrokes. But because everything is captured on the endpoint, we can look at it in terms of productivity, security, or compliance. So we've even got the associated logs and the screenshots if required for action by HR, legal, or security teams. You know, great deal of flexibility and very, very powerful tool here. And what we do is, is we have a solution that, that can then drill down. So uh, here we're going to look at the accounting team for the week. And uh, most folks are using QuickBooks, as one would expect, using Outlook, maybe paying, paying uh, suppliers through ADP. But then we notice Sean. And uh, Sean seems to also have spent a good chunk of this week playing World of Warcraft and uh, Plants versus Zombies. I'm not a fan personally, but uh, they each to their own. Uh, the good thing about this, very easy to spot where the issues are, you know, Cerebral is an artificially intelligence powered inside threat tool. Um, it integrates that user behavioral analytics and activity monitoring to provide a really powerful next generation solution. The predictive analytics allow the security team to proactively hunt threats. So when we look at a risk timeline, there are two components. There's the valuable data, and there's the people that are affiliated with the organization. And we look at the risk timeline in three phases. We look at pre-breach, and we look at the moment of breach, and we look at post-breach. And the longer time goes forward without resolution, the greater the risk grows. Now, ideally, we'd love to stop every threat at pre-breach phase. However, it's not really a reality. So what we need to do is minimize corporate risk at each phase. So in the first phase, we, we need to use predictive analytics. And what that's doing is proactively hunting the threats, uh, identifying employees that are exhibiting signs of risk. So we can head off as many breaches as possible actually before they happen. If a breach occurs, then it needs to be highlighted and alerted straight away. There's an industry average of 206 days to discover a breach. You know, that's totally unacceptable. It's ridiculous. 206 days. And then we think about incident response. You know, we have to understand the context straight away so that appropriate action can be taken within minutes, not hours, not 206 days. That's frightening. You know, we need to understand how the breach occurred and understand if there are accomplices, maybe inside or outside the organization. We've seen a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of historical cases where maybe a former employee is involved with a current employee and are actually uh, shifting data between them or embezzling funds could be all sorts of scenarios and uh, don't really want to about, think about that being inside an organization. And what we're also doing is we are locating and creating an evidence trail that allows prosecution. So we, we're hunting, alerting and responding all in one place, all in one solution. And the Paris Cerebral comes from the AI and all of the functionality that's integrated into it. You know, it really is watching everyone 24-7 uh, if you want it to be, analyzing all behavior, alerting when there's a sign of threat. It lets you see video of what's happening. 
which means you can react in weeks as opposed, oh, sorry, uh, it, in minutes as opposed to weeks, months, or that 206 days. It's got machine learning, and that's building a unique dynamic profile, a digital fingerprint, if you like, for every person and every group on the network. And it's constantly looking for behavioral anomalies, specified triggers, and, and, and other signs of threat. It's watching everything and basically creating a baseline. So the normal for somebody, when they deviate from that, it's going to tell you, it's going to say, hold on a minute, the person who normally prints just 10 to 20 pages a day, all of a sudden printed 80, you know, what are they up to? And because it's gathering all the data um, and, and analyzing everything constantly, it creates a dynamic risk score for all employees. So a security analyst can simply check the risk score on the dashboard every morning and proactively identify which people need a closer look. So on the left, you see that uh, the red, amber, and blue uh, charts, and, and, and clearly, you know, the, the people in red here, the six people flagged red, are high risk. And if you then click on any person, you will get the details about um, what they've been doing. When Cerebro identifies that an action has reached a threat threshold, it immediately alerts the security team. And alerts can be triggered by unusual behaviors, specific events like modifying a file, uh, using keywords, uh, maybe the, the name of a project, maybe the name of a competitor. You know, we provide keywords for fraud, for violence and other categories with it just doesn't include uh, you know language that we would use there'll be a lot of uh, a less formal and more more colloquial language built into that it helps you identify you know where, where the issues are it can also be customized i think one of the important things here cerebral is totally customizable to the environment it goes into so the words relating to one a uh, vertical sector may be different to another. Law enforcement may be difficult to, sorry, different to banking. Banking may be different to, to uh, manufacturing. But it's tailor made to the actual environment uh, in, in, in which we're in. And when you get the alert, you know, you can act very, very quickly, understand if, you know, maybe somebody's accessing records they shouldn't be, uh, or using perhaps credit card data. You know, this is going to tell you. There is no more looking at the haystack and trying to find a needle. This is actually leading you to the needle. And because it's got eyes on glass technology, what it's going to do is give you immediate visibility so you can see exactly what is going on. And, you know, if the alert comes in at 9.35, security can immediately use the DVR playback. It's like a time capsule. It shows you everything that's happened. They might want to go back half an hour to where the alert happened and understand the context of what's going on. Understand, you know, what's happened in an email trail, if there's interactions on IM, if documents are being sent, you've got it all, you've been alerted to it, straight away you can make a decision, you know, is this guy just working on a big report or maybe, you know, is he encrypting the data, hiding it in a PowerPoint as happens and using obfuscation tools to, to cover his tracks. This is telling you you've got a problem, you can act very quickly and get there before he gets a chance to really make it hurt. You know, do you, do you give him a raise for working hard or do we need HR and then call the police? You can make a decision within minutes. So I'm gonna hand back to Christine. Um, yeah, sure. So I see a, a couple of um, well, questions we'll um, ask and see what we can get through here. Um, now, I know the topic is compliance and security here, right? But this is data that can contribute to um, other use cases as, as well. And you might have touched on this a little bit, but I think one is managing productivity or getting insight into productivity. Um, and so can you talk a little bit more about that use case and what you guys are, are seeing today? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I think with productivity, you know, understanding who is you know who who is productive and maybe who's watching Netflix is key to a lot of our uh, a lot of our clients. So obviously we've got the ability at any time to understand if someone is is doing something they shouldn't be doing, uh, but also 
you know, I've got to tell you that a lot of companies use this tool because it has a positive spin as well. You know, it can identify those that that are actually delivering work-wise, those who are completing tasks, you know, within a certain time, maybe those who are, are taking uh, more calls and, you know, getting transcripts into their systems. Um, Another aside to that, let me just add to that as well, actually, it also identifies something that right now is in the press all the time. And that is the fact that, you know, mental health is, is, is you know, really, uh, really big right now. And, and it gives you the, it gives organizations through looking at productivity stats and understand how people are working to identify maybe who's suffering right now as well. You know, who who isn't really coping well with having to work from home? So, as, you know, it has that to it as well. But certainly, you know, from productivity, we can be looking at, you know, completed documents. We can be looking at, um, you know, people not just in isolation, but against their peer group, maybe against, uh, uh, you know, if you take a customer service team, you can compare stats. You have a baseline built from machine learning and uh, it's going to identify, you know, who's above and below that baseline. Yeah, and I think that's really important, especially in today's um, in today's age. You know, when we talk about um, everything from you know insider threat to some of these uh, security risks, like at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's to me, it's all about the human being, right, and the the person behind it. And so, um, I feel like being able to use um, these insights across those different domains and be able to identify people who are struggling and be able to identify people who might just need some some support right um, as well as people you can recognize i think that's such a good use case now another question um that i have for you is um I, we talked about zero trust a, a little bit um uh, earlier on um, but again that's such a huge buzzword right now um you know the the entire concept of you know never trust always verify um any thoughts on how either what you've walked through already or how some of the, the work that you all are doing at Auto ties into that concept of, you know, um, never trust, always verify. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Do you remember there was a, all those years ago, there was a film antitrust. Um, it's funny, zero trust doesn't mean the same to everyone at the same time. And so different people, are, you know, expect different levels of, of, of zero trust, unbelievably. But when you dig into it, you know, zero trust is is actually you know it, it's it, again there's a positive spin but but there are lots of tools there are lots of things you can look at with alerts you want to make sure that the alerts are uh, are honed in on what the what the targets are for the individual corporate so what you're talking about here is is actually with zero trust you know maybe we're looking at um android devices as well Maybe we're looking at um, email going out of out of the building as opposed to staying within the organization. There's a lot of different things you can be looking at. You know, um, what I always say about zero trust is as an organization, it's about understanding the ethos of the organization and really tailor making the solution to deliver what they want from that. And I think the important thing there is, you know, with Cerebral, you've got the ability to 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 really pick and choose exactly what you want to monitor and to what level. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so I think I'm looking through, I feel like a lot of the questions that have come through, we've answered either through through chat, chat or I've asked them. So um, um, do you have any, you know, final thoughts or anything else you want to add as we uh, wrap up? Yeah, I, th I think from, uh, you know, from, from, from let's take, let's take now, let's think about right now, you know, it's the three different areas, isn't it? Let's concentrate on the three different areas and, and not just think about the inside threat. Let's think about the compliance piece, you know, and, and let's think about the people piece as well. And, you know, and understand actually how they all come together. Um, you know, and, and as I've said already, you know, we've, we've seen a switch since, uh, since COVID came about. And every day we hear a slightly different, a different uh, version on, on on what people want to achieve. Um, you know, the commonality I think is maybe sometimes people don't know exactly what you can do. So I think you know, I think the key here is to actually talk to us, uh, you know, and understand really exactly where how we can help you in your instance. I often find that uh, you know, no two instances are the same within a period of time, and uh, 
it's really understanding you know what people totally need and, and then showing them how we can actually customize it to their needs so for me that's really you know it's that, it's that bespoke piece it's it's understanding what people really do need and showing them how we can actually help them with that issue Awesome. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> um, well, hey, thanks, Chris, for sharing your valuable perspective. Um, and thank you to all of our attendees for spending the last 45 or so minutes with us. Um, if you have any questions, please, of course, feel free to reach out to the team at sales at variato.com. Um, happy National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, everyone, and have a safe and wonderful weekend. Thank you, Christine, again.